Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be going over some Jasper.ai art tips and tricks in case you haven't gotten to use this or you are using this. Hopefully these will help you create some better art much quicker. If you haven't gotten to test it out, I will put a link down in the description where you can get more details about Jasper.ai and their new art feature. Let's begin. So first and foremost, one of the biggest tips that I think is right in front of our faces, which we might not even see, it says Jasper Art is in beta. That's not it. I'm just reading after it. <laughs> Looking for some inspiration, check out the Jasper Art Gallery. So there's the gallery and there's going to be the main page. Now in the main page, they have some featured art. And something I want to keep in mind is that obviously you don't have to go for a, uh, a lighthouse in the water and island which looks fantastic but more specifically what you're looking for is the shades or the colors or the type or maybe it's going to be black and white or something you know apocalyptic like that or maybe something snoop doggish like that okay the idea is that you're going to go through and see what do you like in terms of your style so if none of these styles are your thing that's completely fine there is also the jasper art gallery so usually when it comes down to art in my opinion for example whenever i want someone to make a thumbnail for me or do a logo the hardest thing in the beginning is usually going to be kind of like writer's block like if you go to a page that's blank you sit there you stare at it you don't know what to do that's usually why i recommend creating some type of outline of course jasper can help with that too before you get going because you at least have a template that's what I'm getting at when it comes to this. You're getting the general vibe of what you want to do. Do you want something that's lighting and outdoor, more realistic? Do you want something that's more of like a photographer? Do you want something that's context and use case? Maybe you like the monochrome uh, style, and that's something I happen to like. So let's take a look at this. So we have cat with sunglasses, pencils, pencil sketch, warm and moody. So if we can't copy that, but we can write it in. I'm going to go back over here. So we have pencil sketch. I believe it was warm and moody, okay? Now we can pretty much fill in whatever we want. So that was a cat with sunglasses. We can say a, okay? This was another popular one on the main page, an, uh, an astronaut raccoon, which I just find really funny. Uh, pencil sketch, warm and moody. Let's create that. Haha, <laughs> look how great that is. We have our pencil sketch. Uh, it looks like he's holding the astronaut helmet. Looks like it right there quite possibly. There he's got his astronaut suit on. This one he's in full form and this one's just kind of looking very devilish. Uh, those are great. You see what I mean though? But once we have kind of the mood that we want, like these are great for just getting inspiration. Like if you love that black and white pencil look, let's go back and do something completely different. Analog media. Okay. These are more of like, was that like a color painting, mountain range of color, watercolor. That's the word. Okay. There's the rock. That is great. That looks like a kid drew it. Crayon drawing of dinosaurs. One dinosaur is red and the other is blue. I mean, that's exactly uh, what they were looking for there. What if we have more of a cartoon in character? So we have pixel art. That's more of pixel art. That looks like superheroes. So we could say comic book style illustration. So we're pretty much just changing around the aspects. For example, if this was here, this would be like comic books or cartoon. I think cartoon is, where is it? under this one okay cartoon either way i kind of like using the free form more i think it's just overall easier where you can just type in what you want and i also have a little cheat sheet i'm going to bring up also but anyway what are we talking about here i just lost my train of thought so we have comic book style illustration give me one sec all right so there's our comic book style illustration we still have our astronaut raccoon let's create and see what we get all right, that is perfect. <laughs> Look at that. I love that. That's the raccoon astronaut. Once again, same thing. But now we have a completely different way of doing it. So I think the biggest thing is at least know what you want in the beginning. It can be very basic, but it's the details after it that are really good. So that's kind of my first tip. It's a, it's a lot of them combined. It's knowing what you want. It's getting some inspiration and looking for more of like the tone that you want the picture. Do you want it cartoon? Do you want it watercolor? Do you want it to look like it was painted? Do you want it more realistic? Do you want it to be really uh, textile? Do you want it to be ceramic and glass? And so on and so forth. Now let's change it up and I'm going to use my little cheat sheet here. So what I have is a list of all the different styles, the mediums and the styles and moods. I think I forgot to put mood right Right there. Uh, if you want this, let me know. All I did was just go here, uh, fill these out and copy these. 
I've been liking Freeform more just because it's more about telling it exactly what to do and I'd rather write it in. And from what I've noticed is that like, say there's keywords that you want, maybe you want realistic and maybe you want full face portrait. With this, you can just select one at the time. But if you go to Freeform, you know, you can add those in with a comma. So I feel like you might get better results. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I like the ability to at least do it myself. So first and foremost, let me come up with an idea and then I'm going to talk more about it and we're going to add to it and we're going to go from there and see how it goes. All right, so here we have a haunted house surrounded by trees. I'm sure you can kind of get something in your mind where it's not going to look all that great. This isn't exactly something that's happy, right? But that means the opposite of happy it can be dark, right? We can start describing it. It could be gloomy. What else is going on? Do we have a storm? Is it raining? Hey, maybe it's there's some rain. Let's just say raining. And aside from that, let's think about how we want this to look. Let's just say this was a comic book style illustration. Maybe it was something out of Goosebumps. Let's just go with that because that's going to have one of the biggest impacts uh, illustration. Okay. Obviously, if we do comic book style illustration or we do realistic, like that's like night and day pretty much. So let's click on create and see what we get. Perfect. That is exactly what we're looking for. Surrounded by trees indeed. This one has a little bit more color. It's hard actually, yeah, there's some rain there. You can see the raindrops. I was gonna say it's hard to see because it's more black and white, but there's definitely uh, some rain going on. That's great. So we have our comic book illustration. Let's change that around a little. And if we need to, we can go back over here for some inspiration. So we have film stocks, types, and processes. So what do they have here? Here's some other great ones like crazy detail, insane detail, portrait, view from a disposable camera. Let's try that one out. So let's get rid of this. So this one is going to be a little bit more realistic. I'm, from what I've noticed, like if I wanted to do, it was in my previous video, like if you do tornado and you do realistic with like a house, I feel that's a little bit harder for it to achieve. It's just something I've noticed. So I'm curious to see how it comes out. Let's create it anyway and see what we get. Wow. And exactly <laughs> like we wanted view from a disposable camera. So you're getting like that 90s, 80s grungy. Uh, it's kind of like out of a, you know, like a horror film or something that looks fantastic. It's there's no, I don't think there's any house there, but that still looks amazing. And there it is right in the background. Looks like something out of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Anyway, let's, let's change around that. And this is kind of combining with what we talked about before. We have some other great ways of doing this. Look at this a uh, couple portrait vintage film, or we could do something like realistic professional photo, crazy detail. Let's do that. So realistic professional crazy detail, crazy detail. Sure. Let's click on create. And so, like I said, that's why I have this here as well, because this will give us some ideas. We also have inspiration from some of the other photos that have gone by. And these are phenomenal. My goodness, little less realistic. I'd say that one looks a little bit more cartoonish just because like a, maybe a watercolor sketch, but still looks fantastic. Once again, that one looks great. We're talking about a haunted house surrounded by trees, dark, gloomy, raining, realistic. Maybe that was too much, but that looks fantastic. And once again, so let's change around these and let's do one more just to kind of give it a final touch. What do we have here? We have Polaroid style. If we want that double exposure, camera phone style mountains. Okay, let's go back. And let's see if we were going to be doing a haunted house, maybe we want something like this. So impressionist painting of an older man under a blanket, peaceful calm. Let's just do an impressionist painting. Okay. And let's click on create. I just find it so fascinating and it's so cool that you can just change around a few words in your whole, all the images will change dramatically. As you can see there, once again, amazing, just exactly what we're looking for here. We removed the rain. It's still dark. It's still gloomy. We've got this haunted kind of nasty house buried in the trees. Hard to see. But now this is the impressionist painting. Hard to see once again. Uh, and these are just phenomenal overall. So uh, I hope you got some value out of this when it comes to a few tips and tricks. Overall, I kind of want to reiterate them. First and foremost, at least have an idea of what you want to create. I've done this myself when I go to create videos and I go, wait a minute, what do I want to create? And then I'll sit there for a few minutes before I start actually rolling the, uh, you know, hit the record button, so to speak. I'll go, okay, now I want to do this because even I'll do the same thing. Same thing with writing an article. Make sure you have some type of topic that you want to create because once you have a haunted house surrounded by trees, 
Now you can get so much inspiration. Okay, how do you want that to look? And that's where a lot of the inspiration is great from, which Jasper even recommends. I'm not saying go there and copy it exactly, but it's easy to see if you want something to look more of like a watercolor or an old school painting, or if you want some maybe motion blur, more realistic, more grainy, more old school, like uh, the black and white, or maybe like a painting or more realistic, however it's going to be. And by doing that, I think you're going to get much better results. Plus, once again, I really like the freeform aspect. If you want, or if anyone wants this, I will paste it down below in like a comment where you can copy these because I like using freeform. Like I said, I like being able to use, say, multiple. Say, maybe I want to do realistic and I want to do a full face portrait of someone, right? Or maybe I want to do like realistic and I want ambient light in it. So this allows you to utilize a bunch of them at once. Rather, instead, when you go to choose from it, you can only choose one here. So if anyone wants that, let me know in case I forget, I'll leave it in a comment. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. The link down below where you get some more details about jasper.ai art, which is a brand new feature at the time of creating this. That's about it. My name is James. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.